Welcome back, family. Brownstone and View from the Stoop are proud to bring to you another great interview with the wonderful human being and amazing actor. We were so pleased to introduce you to Denise Dowd. Uh, Denise is someone you would call a face, someone that you've seen in comedies, dramas, and biopics that are very staged on the screen, and you might not know her name, but she's definitely impacted the, the films that you've seen. Uh, you may know her from Coach Carter or uh, the iconic film Ray with Jamie Foxx. She's stolen the scenes and brighten the screen and so many things from news radio to criminal minds. She's blessed us with her appearance on the show and we cannot be more grateful and excited. So without further ado, let's get to it. So let's start um, with uh, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a little warm here in LA today, but I'm good. <laughs> you can't complain it be, about it being warm when it's cold here. It's cold <laughs> we're outside of yeah, we're outside of DC, so um, we're starting to hit those fifty, forty, thirty days. Wow, that's fast. That's early. Uh, that's about normal for this time of year. Last year though was pretty um, crazy. We were still in the seventies and eighties in December, so oh, I know my. that's nothing new for you guys, but <laughs> we're not used to it. I know I got back from New York and it was mid mid to upper nineties and it just took me out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's October. That's October. So it's been great. So. Well, it's football weather, so I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I guess let's start at the beginning. Um, tell me a little bit about what led you to the acting field. Where are you from? As I saw on the IMDb page, you're from the most beautiful place on earth. <laughs> so how did you go from there to, you know, acting in all these films and stage? Um, born in Hawaii, yes. My dad was a career in Navy. And, um, and I started acting in the third grade. Uh, my mom convinced me to audition for the sixth grade play my sister was doing for Ansel and Gretel. And they needed a narrator, so I auditioned and I got the part. And um, because we moved around so much, it was a way for me to always get involved in something. Although I did, I was big into sports. I used to play the trumpet, but the acting thing was always there somewhere. Whether it was a if it was in talented school or an after school program, and and it just kind of was a way for me to, you know, I guess in a way escape. But then I really found that I loved doing it, and playing different characters, but yet still coming back to me. So um, so that's how it all started. And, and that every, every two years when we moved, I always found a program to be involved in. And then when I um, was in high school, I auditioned for a, com- a group called Up With People. And I also applied to the Naval Academy, which was the first year that women were accepted into the Academy. And I got accepted to both. And I I went all the way through the Naval Academy's um, requirements, and right at the time I was to take the physical training test, up with people said, we need a response, we need an answer, and I had to make a choice. Was I doing the Navy for my dad, or was I going to do theater for me? And I chose me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it worked out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think so. It's been it's been quite the journey, I must say. I must say, yeah. Like I said, I went to your IMDb page, and literally, you have been in every type of film that, that there's possible to be in. Um, classic shows like News Radio, Coach Carter, you were in. How do you go from the the group to you know Hollywood? Uh, I, I, I came to Hollywood. I, I was living in Germany for seven and a half years, and I was headed to New York. My lifelong dream is to do Broadway. And um, I thought, well, I'll go visit my sister who was living, who was living here at the time. And um, my brother-in-law said to me, Denny, why are you going to go to New York? You've got theater, you've got television, you've got movies here. And I made a choice to stay and try and stick it out. and. I was 30 at the time, and I just felt old <laughs> as far as Hollywood standards are concerned. 
and I felt really behind the gun. And I immediately just started doing some theater and meeting people. And I was doing ex- I did extra work for about eight months. And then this show, um, I don't, I don't know if you would remember. It was called Alf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I remember Alf. I'm, I'm yeah. not that young. Well, they, um, they uh, were looking for extras. I saw it in the, in the, you know, the backstage magazine, and I said, okay, this is my last background extra work. And I, they, they took me on, and there on the set, the director said, do you want to say a line? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And so everything changed at that moment. I was what's called Taft Hartley into the union, and makeup and hair and wardrobe were all fussing over me. And my line in ALF was Oliver's story. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> but it got me into the union, and I got an agent after that. And um, and I just I just sort of just been steady chicken it chicken away at it, you know. So um, it's not been easy. I I worked for a couple of years as an operator at an answering service, and then I um, was a office manager for a law firm. These two guys took me on in Westwood and I told them I was an actor, but you know, the people hiring you, everybody's an actor in LA. So they're like, yeah, okay. And, um, I worked for them for about five years until it was the point where I was gone from the office more than I was there. And then once again, I had to make a choice and, um, my boss let me quit. I was able to pull unemployment and, um, I haven't worked a day job and I don't, know how many years, probably 18 years now. So I've been able to support myself through acting, and I also taught at a school called Amazing Grace, and I direct and I coach. So it's um, an everyday hustle. (laughs) What do you enjoy the most? Oh, you know, I don't know anymore, because I thought at one point I would never stop acting, which I won't. But I really do love the directing, and I direct a lot of theater. And I, I'm, my background is theater, and I, I was in New York doing a play with the Negro Ensemble Company last month, and um, it was the time of my life. Uh, stage, is, stage is my bones. That's where I'm from, and um, that's, I guess, of, of all of it, I love theater. It doesn't pay the bills, but it does. It feeds the soul. Mm-hmm. So. so, along those lines, what draws you to a role? How do you choose? Have you reached the point where you'll turn down something because it doesn't fit where you want to go? I, I wish I, I wish I was at that point in my career. <laughs> um, I mean, I've turned down auditions because, yes, um, you know, that's not the character I want to portray or, you know, I feel like I've put in enough time to earn a, a larger role, um, but but at this point, it's still, it's about, because so many movie stars have come into television, it's harder for us working actors to get those roles we used to get, say, mm-hmm. eight, ten years ago. So sometimes you just have to say yes, because you know you're not sure when the next opportunity is coming, but I still do take a look at the kinds of roles that I do portray, because I know that I've got some young people who who follow me and know me, and I want to just represent the best that I can in this business. So, well, to me, you're what I would call a face—someone who, if I see you in a film, I know who you are and what you've done. Um, do you kind of find that in your personal life, people recognize you when you're out and about? They do, um, and more so lately, and. It was a time when people would say, don't I know you? And I would just say, no, I don't think so. And I was with a girlfriend in Norfolk, Virginia, years ago, and this young kid said, Dad, Dad, isn't that the lady from from that movie? And he was like, I can't remember. And, and so they were going back and forth, and um, they stopped us and said, don't, don't, don't we know you? And my, I said, no, I don't think so. And my girlfriend said, yeah, you probably do. She does movies. And she said, dude, don't. Just, just tell them it's okay to just tell them. And I, I, from this point on, people do stop me, and I say, they'll say, "Where do I know you from?" And I said, "Probably television and film." And then 
oh my god, yeah, I feel you did such and such and such and such. So, um, it's it's flattering and I'm honored because they're the ones who turn on the TV and um, maybe not necessarily to watch me, but they do see me and um, have enjoyed my work and that I'm always appreciative of. So you mentioned that there were more um, film actors coming into television. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you think that came about? Do you think that there's just not enough roles in films that are I guess, of substance that they're now coming into the domain of the everyday actor? Well, I think that's part of it. And I also think that um, with television, you have more of a life. You know, if you're on a film, they could go anywhere from six weeks to three to four months. So I think those actors who are gone more and more from their families found that doing television, it still allows them to be home. So um, I think it made... Some of it is work choice, but I think a lot of it is family choice and being able to have some, have a life along with a career. Now, I kind of remember growing up in the 80s and 90s, it was almost like a stigma attached to television, where if you did television, that your film career was over, and that no longer seems to be the case. Um, you see people going back and forth now. What what do you think, like, what happened? What changed? Well, um... I think one, the strike was a big, the, the two strikes were a big change. Um, I know that before I got here, there was a strike, I believe, in the 80s and then another one in the 90s and then in 2000. So those strikes have really affected everybody in the industry and it's just sort of trying to find out where you can still work and thrive and survive in this business. And now there's such a, uh, a glut of television, there just seems to be more work um, for more actors, and then, it, you know, so so it seems to just encompass everything, and a lot of the independent films, which have more meat to them, um, are attracting more and more actors, and they may not make as much money, but then again, there is that correlation between an independent film and doing stage work. If you got some meat, something to chew on, and and really work out, sort of like an athlete gets to work out. You get to work out your chops and and find a, a full depth and breadth of a character, which oftentimes in television you don't get to do, um, especially if, if if you're a guest star or a co-star. You're really there to 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 punch in the storyline for them. And um, so I think that a lot of the established actors are finding that there is media work in television, especially now with the cable stations with some really greedy storytelling and writing. I think it's um, serving their spirit and filling their soul with, okay, I can do this and I can still have a family and I can still have a life. And they're finding a balance. And that's, I think, what we all as human beings want to do in life. And, you know, we look up one day and we're working 24-7 and w what's happened to my life? So um, I think that that's where things shifted and changed for for a lot of people. It's, it's just finding the balance in life and still being able to honor your craft and, and do what it is you love. So shifting back to you more specifically, what, looking at, like I said, looking at your IMDb D, DB page, you just keep scrolling. <laughs> like literally, you're just scrolling and scrolling. There are a lot of big name shows, a lot of movies in there. What was the most fulfilling of all the work that you've done. Wow. Wow. I think my two favorite films were Ray and Coach Carter uh, because because they were fuller and richer characters. And, and although I've played lots of principals before, um, this one, it was based on a woman's life and, and, and it... it and how she and the, and the coach affected life and affected change in, in Oakland. And then Ray, just to be a part of that period and that time was, and to be sassy and sexy was awfully fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was a very different role for me to play. And it was in New Orleans, come on, and, and doing a period piece in those fabulous costumes. And it's funny because at the time I had, had locks 
and I had to braid my locks and wear this wig, and I tell you, I felt like I had a vice grip on my head every day. <laughs> <laughs> but what part of beauty and, and, and art, right? But um, right. But those, I think, were probably my two favorite. And then as far as television, um, Criminal Minds and Beverly Hills 90210. So, um, what was, what led to Ray? How do you, how do you get that role? Because that was a pretty big, meaty role for you. Yeah. Um, my friend, um, and casting director, Sydney McCurdy brought me in on it. Um, I guess sort of around the second round of things. And, um, I went in and auditioned and I got the call back and, Jamie was in the room, the director was in the room, and and I'd had a crazy night the night before. And uh, a girlfriend of mine lost a tooth, and we were up all night looking for it. So when I went... <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say tooth? Tooth, <laughs> tooth. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, so and so it was just crazy. So when I went in that day, it wasn't about, oh my God, I need this role. It was about let's do this and get back and help, you know, help out at home and, and handle business. So, so my, my focus wasn't so much on, I got to have it. I got to have it. It was, let's go do the work. And then, you know, the rest is up to the casting gods of God. Um, so I believe that every, every role that we play has our name on it. And, and I just felt this one did. It spoke to me. And um, I had just about enough sass at that time to carry it off. I think mm -hmm. so. Um, so yeah, it was it was quite the journey playing that character. Now there are movies. There's been a lot of biopics that uh, have occurred. You know, from The Temptations to Little Richard that kind of speak to a certain group of people. But did you know when you guys were doing Ray that this was going to be this great movie that it, it became, you know, people winning Oscars and, and so on and so forth. Um there there was a there was a wonderful sense of excitement on the set. And whether it was about this this the telling of Ray Charles's life, that was, I think that was part of it. But it was also this there was this really wonderful creative energy going on. Taylor Hackford was amazing to work with, and he was demanding, but he was fair in his in what he wanted, and he was a great captain of that ship. And um, did we know that it it could win Oscars? No, but watching Jamie on set, um, you got the feeling because he was a hundred and fifty percent all in, and um, and because he was so committed, it just makes everybody else that much more committed. So. Everybody was at the top of their game during that shoot, I think, and um, and just really thrilled and honored to have been a part of it. Speaking of winning awards, I think in this last um, Emmy season, Viola Do Davis uh, won that Emmy, and in her, in her speech, she mentioned that there weren't enough roles for women of color. Um, how do we go about changing that? Uh do we need to write the roles ourselves? Do we need to demand better representation in the films and television that we see? Well, I think a little bit of both. But, um, I think I think the writers need to write, and then we've got to and 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 it's happening more and more. You know, there's more production, especially online, that people are shooting their own stuff and it's getting seen and getting picked up, which is one way and. And I think also with the wind of, of Viola as well as, um, okay, brain fart. Um, ah, she, she got supporting. Help me, Kai. The young lady from um, 12 Years a Slave. Is that who you're referring to? Well, Lupita had won, but also, um, oh, shoot. She'll hate me. She's a friend, she's a friend of mine. She'll hate me. But anyway, but, 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 and, and, and those kinds of roles that are, that are garnering awards and people are watching, it, it brings more, of course, brings more money into the networks and more attention to, oh, black people, 
people will watch them. Okay, so so I, I've noticed even this season in the casting, they are trying to expand. You know, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, but mm-hmm. when, when money is concerned, then people start to take notice. And um, and I think that that's a, a change for for us, you know, a step forward. I thought, it's funny, I thought when Obama got in office, things would be different, but it, it, we seem to have gotten shut out for a few mm-hmm. years. You know, it's like people got pissed right. off, us, you know, but um, it's shifting because it's making money. And at the end of the day, that's what this business is about, is money. Um, so um, I, I think that that's, that's in part. But I think that these young writers who are coming up and, and have this really wonderful new voice, I think they're slowly starting to get heard, and that, I think, will make all the difference in the world. So, to kind of come full circle, what's next? What, Where do you see yourself in the next five years? I want to go to New York, Kai. Mm. I, want, I want to do New York. I've, I've you know, dabbled in it, and... Um, I know there's not as much television and film there, but planes fly. And um, I, I wanted, I got to go for Broadway. That's what I'm shooting, shooting for. And, um, mm-hmm. and and that's where I hope to see myself in five years, is on stage in New York and um, kind of coming full circle for myself because that's where I started was on stage. So um, I'd like... Would you want to write your own play or... Direct your own play as well. Um, you know, I've had, I've had, I've, I've, I've performed in one play I directed, and it was hard, and I did it, and I was, it was good, and and it got a lot of awards. But it's it's interesting. I've made the choice lately to just be the actor. Um, wearing two hats, I can do, but I don't necessarily want to do. Um, so I'd rather just be the actor. There's a few plays that I have read and done some readings of that are uh, dancing in the wings, waiting for them to be explored. So uh, and I've talked to some people in New York about them and have some interest there. So um, I'm hoping that that will come to fruition. And then I've directed this amazing play out here <clears throat> called Recorded in Hollywood. And uh, before there was Motown, there was John Dolphin who opened a record shop in South Central Mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And it was the place to be for 10 years. And then he was murdered. And I was fortunate enough to be hired on as the director. And uh, we ran 14 weeks to completely sold out houses, which Mm -hmm. is Los Angeles in theater is completely unheard of. But... um, they're looking to remount it here in Los Angeles, and the ultimate goal is to get it to Broadway. So if that is my way in, then so be it, and I'm happy to do it. Um, but I'm really proud of the production. I had an amazing cast of 18 um, artists here in Los Angeles, and um, and we've done some rewrites on the script, so we're looking to expand and um, just get more people knowledgeable of this man who really kind of started this era of these, these record companies and labels and uh, get his story out there. Well, I um, I kind of want to end up with talking to the teacher, if you, if you will. Where do they start? Where where does the, the kid coming out of high school who's been doing dinner theater for the last two years, um, where does he go? What does he do? What does she do to get into the business? Ah. Well, I always say get a job. Get a job that will allow you to go on your auditions, but will also give you the space to know where your rent check is coming from. So when you walk in that casting office, you're not desperate, but you don't have to have that job, but you want the job. And it's a very different thing to want it and and, and just or to have to have it. And so, you know, casting directors can smell um, desperation and, and it affects your work. My <laughs> first rule of thumb is have a job and then get in class, get in theater, start building your network. 
um, get some really great head talks and make sure they look like you. Um, nothing will make a casting director more angry than you walking in and there's a picture of you that looks fabulous and you're not looking so great that day. So to get a picture that looks like you and represents who you are at the time, keep them updated, keep your resume updated, and study, stay in class or do theater, which always just keeps your muscle ready and, um, and, and, and find balance in your life because I know for the first 10 years I was here, I didn't travel, I didn't go on vacation, I was afraid I'd miss a phone call. But there's got to be a balance in your life. Um, and I think that that just makes you the better artist and it enriches you as an artist because then you have more life, life ex- journeys um, and experience to pull from. So it just makes you a much more well-rounded human being and artist. That's what I would say.